All right, guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today, I'm in a 2016 Lexus IS 300H. The Lexus IS is a small executive compact saloon car, so it goes head to head with the Audi A4, the Mercedes C-Class, the BMW 3 Series, the Jaguar XE. They've been around for over 20 years and I've always been a big fan of them. They just offer something a little bit different. The second video I ever made was with a Mark I IS 200. A few months later, I filmed with a Mark II uh, IS 250. Now, of course, this is the Mark III. This model, the IS 300H, is a hybrid. So it uses petrol and electricity, but it's not a plug-in hybrid, so you never have to plug it in. Under the bonnet is a 2.5 litre petrol engine. In addition to that, you've got a battery pack, which means that without you doing anything at all, it switches between petrol and electricity to try and save you some fuel. And it does work, actually. This car is capable of about 65 miles per gallon. As with all hybrids, they work better around town because right now I'm doing 30 miles an hour and I'm in EV mode. There we go. As I step on the accelerator, it's just switched over to petrol and then back to EV. It just does it totally seamlessly without you even realizing. They also offered this Mark III Lexus IS with a two liter turbo engine, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. The road tax on that two liter turbo is about 260 pounds a year, whereas this hybrid is only 10 pounds. And the two liter turbo will only do 38, 39 miles per gallon, whereas this will do in excess of 60. So to be honest, my money would be on the hybrid version. It just makes more sense. Because it's a Lexus, it's built to very high standards. Most of the interior is finished in nice soft leather that's been nicely stitched and nicely finished. But there are a few, few areas of cheap, nasty plastics, which is a little bit strange and it does let the, uh, does let the car down. I like the styling of the interior though. I like the analog clock. That's rarely seen these days. I like the fact that you get a good old-fashioned gear selector rather than one of those joystick things like you find in a Prius. You obviously get Bluetooth hands-free, cruise control, steering wheel buttons. You even get paddles behind the steering wheel, which are a little bit pointless because the last thing this car is is sporty. The steering wheel feels nice. It's nice and chunky. The materials they've used are nice and soft too. You get a decent stereo and you get sat-nav and things like that. But to try and tune in the radio to your favorite station is a little bit like working at Bletchley Park in the 1940s. I found it completely impossible. The quality of the leather on the seats is very good, the base is very comfortable, but I just find the upright part too hugging. It's like being given a bear hug from Hulk Hogan. But overall though, the interior is very good. I quite like the heated seat buttons. They've replaced those twisted dials that you'd find in the old IS. The actual driving position is very good, visibility is pretty good. There's plenty of storage, you get a couple of cup holders. This centre armrest is nice and soft and you've got USB points and auxiliary points in there. There are some more storage bins in the door cards. You get the idea that Lexus have thought of everything. There's plenty of room in it too. Don't get me wrong, none of those compact executive saloon cars are particularly spacious. This Mark III IS is a few inches longer than the previous model, so you get more legroom in the back and a slightly bigger boot. It doesn't feel any bigger to drive though, to be honest. You can open the boot from a button on the boot lid, but I've not found it yet. I don't know where they've positioned it, but it's quite difficult to find. You'd need the people from Oak Island to help you out with that one. It's a really nice car to drive though, because it's hybrid, it's, it's totally silent. Right now I'm just in total EV mode. It's just quite a serene driving experience. You just don't feel stressed at all. The only thing you can hear is the very faint whirring noise of the electric motors. You can't hear much wind or road noise either. So they've done a good job with this to insulate it. I do like how silent it is though. It just adds to its luxury feel. As I've mentioned in all my other hybrid videos, it does make you change the way you drive. You kind of geek out about how many miles per gallon you can get as opposed to performance or handling. Which is a good thing to be honest because that's where the IS falls short. This IS 300 is rear wheel drive and it produces 223 brake horsepower. So you'd think that would be enough for it to be quite an exhilarating drive, but it isn't. It never feels quick. The steering lacks any feel, it's quite quite light and vague but again for some people that's probably perfect but if you're a more more spirited driver then you're probably better off with the three series well definitely better off with the three series or the Jaguar XT if you put your foot down I mean it gets on a little bit but it does make quite a racket don't get me wrong there's enough power for overtaking so it's not dangerously slow it's just not it's just not very thrilling the ride quality is very good, which is a surprise because it's quite a heavy car. I think that's helped by the, the quite spongy seat bases. It should be quite easy though with a car like this in the real world to achieve 60 miles per gallon. You'll use fuel uphills, but then of course you'll gain it back again going back down. 
So perhaps because the IS can't rival the 3 Series or the Jaguar XC in terms of performance, it's actually more of a positive thing than a negative thing for most people. Because I could see myself using this as a daily runaround and saving something more exciting for the weekends and the evenings. And I think a lot of other people could too. It takes 8 seconds to get to 60, so it's no slouch, but it just never feels, never feels exciting. The noise that it makes from that CVT gearbox, like the Prius, and like the Auris, and like the CT, always makes you feel more sorry for it than anything else. It's like it's begging you and pleading you to stop. It just feels unnatural. Another good thing with the Lexus IS, apart from the cheap road tax and the low running costs, is the main dealer experience. Every single time I leave Lexus Stockport, I leave feeling quite satisfied. And you don't get that with a lot of main dealers. The servicing cost will cost you around £300 for a minor service, up to maybe £500 for a major. You can also buy a Lexus extended warranty. Now a two year warranty on something like this will cost you around £600. So keep up with the Lexus servicing and stick one of those warranties on it and you'll have peace of mind then until this car reaches 12 years old. Prices for an IS300 start at around £10,000 here in the UK. You want to look for one with full Lexus service history in my opinion because it just shows that the owner's cared for it. There are loads of different trim levels to choose from too. I wouldn't personally go for an F Sport because the ride's too firm. You really want to look for one in my opinion with leather, sat nav, heated seats because when you come to sell it you've got more of a chance of getting more of your money back. This particular one has done 77,000 miles which is quite a lot of miles for a three and a half, four year old car. But you'd never know to drive. Over the bumps it's completely solid, there are no knocks or rattles and this one is for sale for around £14,000. If I was a sensible person, I'd have something like this instead of my Range Rover, but I'm not, so let's move on. If you want a reliable, luxurious, compact saloon, and you're not interested in going everywhere sideways, then I can't see a better option than an IS. So thanks once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know, and I'll do my best to get back to you. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link down here somewhere. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.